What up, sweet gang? It's your girl Rochelle in the building coming to give you life with another video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the graduation apple. So once again, this is a live recorded video. For those that will be reviewing this video, please be advised that this was a live recorded stream video. And there will be a Q&A section in this video. So I welcome you all once again. And we're going to get started with the supplies that we have this morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining me this morning. I'm going to get right into the video. Sorry for the technical difficulties yesterday. Little disappointed that I did deliver yesterday, but it's all good. We're here today. And we're going to get it started. All right. So what I have before you are the supplies that I'm going to use. I'm also going to show you how to color tone your chocolate candy melts. And the supplies I have here is this is Mercus chocolate red candy melts. I have some Paramount crystals, which Paramount crystals is basically a fully hydrated um type of oil uh, with soy in it so um these are the little paramount chips all right have my spatula my tackle scraper my rolling pin my strong stick for my apples i have my tap it my number tap it that I'm going to use. My rope for the tassel, rope mold. My cutter. This is a small strip cutter. And the large strip cutter that I'm going to use to make the sash. And I also have the square cutters that is designed to make the graduation hat which I have one already over here and that is very firm and I'm going to show you how to achieve that by using this square cutter and my powdered sugar pouch and I also have two brands of chocolate coloring that I'm going to use I'm going to tell you both about one is not available at the moment, which I'm going to use, but I'm going to show you the alternative, which is the Chef Master's candy color that I'm going to use to enhance the color on the chocolate candy melts. All right, my Perix bowl that I'm going to melt and dip my apples in. Melt my candy melts in and dip and my Granny Smith apple. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> What I have here is my Granny Smith apple, and it is it's clean but unclean. And what I mean by that, this apple has been cleaned, washed, and rinsed, but the wax is not removed. So when dipping chocolate, you don't have to strip the wax off the apple unless you want to. It's your choice. So it's all about how you melt your chocolate and letting it wait before you dip your apple okay so what you want to do is insert your stick make sure that it's completely upright okay you want to push your straw and stick your stick in first just a little bit before uh, like right in the top part of your apple then inserting your straw to make sure that it's in and just pressing down, giving it a shake, making sure that it don't go to the bottom, and we are set for dipping. So we're gonna set that aside. Taking our chocolate candy milk, I'm gonna show you how to color this chocolate. So this bag is about a 16 ounce bag of candy milk, okay? We're going to melt it for 30 seconds before we do any coloring 
All right. And to a 16 ounce bag. And I'm going to tell you about the Paramount Crystals. Um, when adding to your candy melts. And using this particular candy color, which is the Chocolate Chameleon by um, Artisan Accent. This is a very good um, food coloring for chocolate. And um, when using this, you don't have to use any type of oil um, or shortening to your chocolate for your candy melts to get smooth. So I'm just going to show you that... Um, when melting your chocolate and how to apply um, the coloring, you don't have to use your candy, uh, your Paramount crystals. But if you had to, I would use two tablespoons of short uh, Paramount crystals to a 16 ounce bag, and you just put into the bowl here, and then you can melt. Okay, so to a 16 ounce bag, you can add in two tablespoons of Paramount Crystals. So I'm going to go ahead and melt this for 30 seconds. So once that's done, I'm going to add in the food coloring. I want you to see how well it's going to um, combine and enhance the red of the color so I'm gonna show you the difference in the two okay I know it's the early morning so removing your bowl mixing up your your candy melts a little bit just to move them around And I like to move them around so they don't stick to the bowl when I put it back in for the next 30 seconds. Okay? So I want you to see how dull this red is. And how vibrant I'm getting ready to change it. Okay? So I'm going to put this back in for 20 seconds. Melting your candy melts in small intervals after the first time helps with um, preventing your chocolate melts from overheating. Working your candy melts around, utilizing the heat from the chocolate and the bowl, the glass bowl, helps with melting down your candy melts as well. If you're not doing a double boil. So this is just um, one of the ways, one of the techniques and methods I do to melt my candy melts. And I like to... Make sure I can get as much melted down before I add it back to the microwave so that I don't have to melt um, for another long period of time, okay? So small intervals are good for those that are melting their candy melts in the microwave, okay? So I'm going to put it back in for another 20 seconds. Give it a stir. And I can see some candy melt still. It's in there. They haven't completely melted, so just giving it a good stir. And 
And also, it depends on the bag because every time you purchase from whether it's online or out the store, you really don't know the shelf life of um, chocolate melt. Um, and, and I usually try to determine that shelf life or if... If I'm in the store, I ask how long it's been out. Given that, they'll give me the a truthful answer. But um, anytime your candy melts can be stubborn or hard to melt, um, they may have been on the shelf a little longer than expected. So you have to keep that in consideration as well how on how to uh, melt your candy melts. Okay? So as you see this red, it looks a little dull. Okay. And it can it looks it can be thin out a little bit before dipping. And using this product helps that. Alright. So I'm gonna add a few drops. Okay, give it a little stir. And mix it in. in helps thin out this candy melts. So I just want to show you just adding a few drops doesn't change much of anything. Okay? So if you add more to or if you just drizzle in, okay, which is not going to change the taste. Okay? But it does thin it out. To where it changed the consistency to be able to work with a little better and it tones up this candy melt and make it to be a little darker okay and you can pour as much as you want in here and you see it doesn't change the consistency with like some other colors that you would use okay the only consistency that is going to change is for the better and that's just to thin it out so if i did wanted to add paramount crystals um and i had a good solid solid red i wouldn't use the coloring and you see the difference in how it flows and how vibrant the red is so if I wanted to still go darker I would put more in see the difference so the same with the candy color remember chef masters candy color not gel color candy color so I'm gonna just show you the difference and show you that it still is going to be the same consistency It's not going to change besides the coloring and you don't need to add both products to achieve the color I'm just showing you that it doesn't change the consistency in your candy melts okay no matter how much you add all right so it wouldn't be necessary for me to add any Paramount Crystals, only if I wanted to, and I really wanted that thin, then it, we, we would have some problems. But, as you see, it, it doesn't need to be added. Alright? Alright, so that's with the coloring. We're using the chocolate chameleon and because that product is not available, this is the um, alternative coloring that you can use to help melt your, uh, color your chocolate. 
candy melts. All right. It could go for chocolate or chocolate candy melts. Okay. All right. So being that this has set out from the microwave for a minute, you after you melt your chocolate and you got a good consistency, even if you're not coloring your chocolate melts, um, you want to let your candy melts sit for a minute for about five a good five minutes before dipping so that you can get a good coverage and not get no elephant skin okay all right so going in dipping my apple here and even if I sit it in the chocolate and add to the top to get a good coverage I'm not worried about um, how the side is going to come out. Just make sure that you do it in a, enough time that your chocolate comes all the way down. The apple and be even all the way around. So I'm just going to take a toothpick to pop that bubble. And like I said, you have to do it in enough time when, if you're covering or if you're sitting the apple into the chocolate melts. Pick it up and let it drizzle in enough time for coverage, for full coverage, okay? And I'm just popping little air bubbles. still scrape my bottoms and then I set it right onto the surface as so. Okay. Anybody want to see me dip another one just to see the coverage again? Just to show a red hearts. Show a hearts. And I'll do that again for you while that dries. All right, one more time for the one time. This time I'm just going to insert. All right, I'm going to insert my apple stick. Remember this apple is not, it's clean, but not clean, meaning the wax is still on the apple, but it's been clean. So I'm just showing you the difference that you can dip with the wax on when dipping in chocolate all right once again you can go in do a rotating turn and if you don't cover the top it can sit in the chocolate long as you move quickly before your chocolate dries okay shaking it so that your chocolate will all come together I'm tapping to make sure the chocolate comes down. Popping some of these air bubbles on the way. Okay. Scraping that extra off. And I Okay, so you see, I didn't add no Paramount Crystals, and that is a good product, even with using the Chef Master Candy Color as well, okay? It's all about melting and letting it sit. It's how 
you it's the method and the technique actually um, you cannot dip straight after they come the chocolate milks come out of the microwave and that makes a difference so those that was having problems with melting chocolate candy melts in the microwave there you have it all right so as soon as it dries you'll see the difference okay How long should it sit? It's it's uh how long should a chocolate sit? For a good five minutes. Just for a good five minutes, even if you like you walk away to prepare something else. Um, a good five minutes after you have melted, then you can go ahead and start dipping. Not too long. Just long as you break long as the heat settles down a little bit before you dip right in. All right. All right, so while we let the let the apples dry, I'm going to show you how to achieve the hat. You're welcome. All right. Letting you know, preparation is key when creating this candy apple or chocolate apple. While it's wet, if you want to add glitter, edible glitter, or sand and sugar, now is the time that you do so um while it's wet so you would take a bowl you will hold your apple over the bowl and just start to pour in pour around the sand and sugar so that it can sit stick and adhesive to um the chocolate um apple so that's how you would add the glitter um let me see if I had some. And you want to go for color to color. All right. You have to make sure that it's color, color to color. Even if you didn't want to add um, uh, sand and sugar and you have edible glitter. This is not edible glitter. But just to show you, holding it over your bowl here to collect this is how you would add your glitter you want to do it while it's wet so that it can collect a lot of people do get these for decorating purposes so i'm just showing you okay this is not edible but i just advise that you do go for edible okay the looks will be different because of the consistency of um, the glitter all right and if you're doing candy apples you would do the same thing but this is how you would create the glitter look when you want to cover while it's wet that's important to know okay even if it's not wet you got to go back and add more you just it, it is it's a little different when you go back to add more because you got to wet the chocolate get it moist enough so that it can collect on or you can brush it on but the better technique is just to add while it's wet and you see the outcome of it okay So I'm going to sit that over there. Okay. And the same for the hat. If you were to cover the hat, um, it's good to apply some corn syrup over your hat. Which I'm not going to cover this because I'm just going to do co solid color. You color, I mean, you apply some, some syrup. And putting, you see how firm this is? Straight, it's very firm. You let it sit overnight, all right? And I'm going to show you how to achieve getting the firmness by using some um, 
Tylos or some CMC powder and letting it sit um, for a couple of hours or overnight. You can prep these hats the day or two days before so that it could be firm like so and not flimsy. So if you were um, coloring your hat, you would add some syrup, add the glitter, the edible glitter, or sand and sugar, same way, and just put it in the in the bowl and shake it up so that it get its total coverage. So make sure that it's coated all the way around the sides when you're coloring or coating the um, the hat. All right. All right. So using Fat Daddy-O's fondant. I'm going to create the cap for the graduation apple. And you want your apple to be thick. Thick enough and not too, not small either, not too thin, but thick enough to look decent onto, this is my Wilton powder pouch. I'm going to move this out the way. So you want to need to find it. So it can be smooth and so you can have a good smooth hat. Okay. Kneading out your find it helps so you don't have any cracks or any crumbles of find it when you get ready to get this shape here. So not too thin and not too thick. And make sure you size up your apple with your cutters, okay? Some apples are big, some apples are, are small. So depending on the size of your apple is going to give you the determination of which cutter to use for the hat. So this will be the perfect size for this particular apple. Because remember, some people use lunchbox apple. Put your square, press, shake it back and forth. Make sure you don't have any uh, rugged edges. Okay. Okay. See how that turns out. Which, that would be a little small for me. Okay. So you just go to the next size. Which is this one and that's what that one is. Okay. So always size up your apple for your cap so that it don't look too small. You want it to look decent enough to be presentable to your customer. Okay? So if you were adding the CMC powder so it can be really firm. And even if you don't have it, just keep your, your um, find it out overnight so it can firm up. But just add a little bit to the center of your, a little bit of powder. I would say like a teaspoon full of the CMC powder to your fondant. And just work it in until it's completely gone. Knead it in, knead it in. Okay. You don't want to add too much because it will become like crumbly and then that becomes an issue. Then it's too firm. Okay. It don't firm up right away. You just have to let it sit. And see that it will firm up. And you just cut out your hat and you set it to the side. Remember, not too thick and not too thin. 
press, shake it back and forth, remove excess. Okay, kind of take your scraper to push in some of those rugged edges because you want it to be very sharp. Okay, like I said, it's still going to be flimsy. That's why it's important to let it sit overnight so that it can become firm as such. All right, so that's the hat and the information in how to get the glitter on your hat and all that good stuff. So we're going to set that aside. Now we're going to create our tass our sashes. Okay, so before you do the sashes, you want to make sure you do your lettering. Like I said, preparation is key. Make sure you're numbers or letters whatever you choose to put on your sashes is totally up to you but when applying the numbers prep them they can be prepped a day ahead of time two days long as you have them set to the side and ready um, to be used okay i wouldn't recommend to do the sashes and prep them ahead of time because your sashes need to fall and lay onto your apple and if you prep them too early and place them onto your apple they will crack those sashes will crack okay so adding a little bit of powder kneading your fondant for your pieces you want to thin this out thin it out enough to be cut out and that's when we're going to use our strip cutters okay making sure it's powdered up here so my sash can come out taking a cutter placing it onto the find it you're going to press, rock it back and forth. It's important to powder up your surface so that it can cut properly. Okay. And this way helps with cutting out your numbers or letters when using a tappet. All right. I find it important that you powder up. You can remove the powder with just a little bit of water, not a bunch and powder up the tappet so that it can come out. Okay? So powdering up the tappet and the sash, the strip, finding the number that you're going to use, place it on there, give it a nice firm press, rocking it back and forth onto your surface. It comes out. Holding the bottom here, the top here, and hit up against your surface a few times so that it'll come out. With the tools, you're going to have to like put it back in to shape. It may come out of shape a little bit, but that's okay. You can put it back in this formation. And you can set it aside when you're ready to use okay and when you're cutting out like the zero it's important that you take out those extra pieces before you pop it out or you're going to have a problem um with the shape after taking out your O. okay making sure there's no extra find it hanging off of there taking a toothpick removing the center okay then pop then tap out so the key to this and any tap is is to powder up your surface and to powder up your 
tap it. All right? Any questions on that before I move right along? So that's how you achieve your numbers. All right, moving right along. So I'm going to go ahead and knead this back together. And then I'm going to do my smaller strips. Okay. And the st smaller strips are going to be those strips that is going to be on the bottom of the strip cutter. I know some of y'all have already seen me do this before. But I'm coming to give life to those that have not had the opportunity or chance to do so with me. Okay, taking a smaller strip cutter and cutting out your piece. I'm going to thin this out just a little bit more. And I only need a few pieces. Press. Shake back together, take that extra off. Okay. You want to make sure that it's completely cut in. Okay, if it feel like it's not, powder up your surface and just shake back and forth. I try to look for those lines. Okay. And then you can just remove it with a toothpick, a small knife that you may have, and that's how you get your strips. All right. We'll move our strips over here, and don't need too many of them. And now we're going to work on the sash. The sash does not have to go around the apple. Just two strips to complete the top. Okay. Remember, you don't want your finders to stick while trying onto the mat. By trying to cut out your pieces once again press remove take your strips out okay now this is the part where you start um, adhering the numbers and your other strips to your sash. So what I normally do is take a little bit of water onto a little bit of brush. Just not too much. I just added too much. You just want enough to put your numbers on there. It'll go away. Okay, after your numbers are firm. Place your numbers on before you attach your sash to the apple okay making sure it's aligned properly and even okay 
O. And the two. All right. And there you have your numbers applied and adhere it to your sash. Now let's put on the strips. Applying some water. Now what I normally do is take the rope here. Come up some, put it across, line it up, and cut just along the sash. Just as so. And do the same for the bottom. You want to apply two, line it up. And this helps to get even parts to. All right. And that's how you get your smaller lines on there. So making sure this is lined up. which I'm going to have to come down and okay cut cut okay go ahead that side All right, once again, it's the thing about going live. Pick up all the noise. Unedited video, right? So, with the extra that you see, cut off the bottom okay clean up any powder that you may have so therefore you got room enough it may not look a little even but yeah it's a lot of work so that's why I said coming to you live is a little different. Now, I could have did an edit video and it probably been done in 15 minutes showing you. But this is raw deal. So those that's really watching this video, this is straight rawness of the creativity and the time that you have to put in to create these particular pieces. And like I stated, you don't have to um, use the whole strip. I like my strip to hang down at least to the bottom of the apple so I give myself enough strip to work with and I can just cut it down as so excuse me and just pulling it back So that's why when you charge these special custom apples, like I said, you don't have to go all the way around, but it's extra and I'm just putting that on there. So if you apply, if the 
find it is moist enough it'll it'll be able to apply to the apple and as I stated once again you don't have to go around the apple you just put um, enough uh, sash just start and apply it right at the top okay and then at this point you will make a little hole for the center okay for your cap remember let it get firm enough so that it can go over the straw and kind of turn it Okay, and that's how you make your graduation apple. All right, so achieving the rope, same way the rope can be colored gold. Taking your find it, kneading it. Okay, you don't have to use too much. Okay, powdering up that rope for the tassel. And pressing in the, find it to the size rope that you wanna use. Okay, for your tassel. Make sure that it's powdered up. Now the good thing we're using the scraper, taking the scraper and just along the top of the mold and in between the find it, run it across to take off any extra. Okay. Lay it along the surface, pop it out, and pull your mold back. All right? The same way with your tassel. You don't want to do it ahead of time because if it's sitting out, it's going to become firm. And then it's not going to look right when you apply it to your hat. So taking the rope, wrapping it around. And so now according to your tassel you can have it you can have more than one however you choose to do it just cut off that extra I'm just going to use the rest of this and I didn't apply anything because the to find it is moist enough okay and that's just a, your tassel with a little bit of highlighter gold okay and some and this is just a highlighter gold um, that I have here there is other golds that you can use you can paint it on and just apply some lemon extract or some uh, vodka to your gold dust okay just enough to coat where it's you don't want it to be too too loose okay and you just have to eyeball it out when it's and so you just add a little add a little dust and add a little um, vodka or lemon extract at a time, and and definitely use a brush that's more 
define more smaller so you won't get um, gold onto your hat. And I'm just coloring the rope as so. Being careful that I don't break anything. Time and patience and preparation is is definitely about any custom apple so for those that's watching this video and say oh this is a long video well this is the actual time of preparation and how to even though i had some pieces made but it takes time this takes time this is not an edit video it's showing you in real life what i'm doing actually doing to create this piece and it's all in the preparation you guys all right all in the preparation and whatever design you choose to go with is up to you what color you're going to coordinate with is up to you but just know um make it beautiful fun okay and there you have your graduation apple this is without the glitter to the cap or to the red um i know it's not dry so i don't want to break off the tassel okay but that's how you create your piece and like i said once again i showed you in the video if those that had just recently joined us please take the time to review the video and how to achieve glitter or sanding sugar onto your chocolate um, while it's wet. And this is um, the outcome. It can be done with edible glitter. This is not edible glitter. This was just to show you while I was instructing you on how to apply. So I advise that you go for edible glitter. And I will leave the link in the description box below. It does work. And you just have to add a little bit more to your apple so just don't get one jar if you're doing glitter apples for your graduation okay but that's the outcome of that in the same way you would do your um cap do the same way just add some syrup carol syrup over it lightly and then cover it with the sand and sugar or cover it with the glitter Shake it in a bowl and it'll cover. Make sure you got your size cover as well. All right. So as you see, the long process of creating this piece and preparation. Preparation is key when it comes to creating this piece. And like I stated, for those that will be re-watching this video, this is an actual stream live video that was recorded. And the process was done. In this time and I thank you all for joining I will take a few questions and that is my piece for today okay let's get this video to 600 likes for the next custom made Apple or color Apple that you may want to see why they more in the grass next door <laughs> Come on, let's get this video to 600 likes. I know you all are enjoying. Uh, um, no, I'm sorry. I will not have classes in Mississippi. Um, actually, registration ended for my hands-on classes. This is my official year with Your Sweet Connection doing uh, and orchestrating my own workshops. I will be going to cake shows but um i'm going to be focused more on youtube and this year is going to be the last year that i do my own private workshops okay 
Um, and we sold out of Richmond, Maryland, and New Orleans may have one seat. New Orleans is where I'm doing the meet and greet. But um, any information on my online classes, the link will be in the description box up under this video. All supplies that I am using in this video will also be in the description box up under this video. Okay? Uh, nope, Chicago is not on the list. But I will be in St. Louis at a cake show teaching. And I will leave the link in the description box below as well. Thank you all. Come on, let's get this video to 600 likes for the next upcoming video. If you want me to keep going and keep giving you life back to back. St. Louis, Missouri. I'll be in I'll be there in July. So the only states that I'm traveling to for the hands-on workshop um, is um, Richmond, Virginia, College Park, Maryland, New Orleans, Louisiana, Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, and Miami, Florida. Those are the hands-on workshops where I will be teaching several different treats. We will have a continental breakfast and lunch will be served and you will learn all the tricks and the trades and stuff um, in person hands on with me so those are the states that i have majority of them are sold out miami is still open and that's in september 21st so any information regarding the hands-on workshops check out the link below send a message to my business page not my website and um just go to the link that's in my description box and it will get you there. All right. So sign up um, for St. Louis. That's at Shelby Suites. Um, seats are still available and my classes do sell out. So I hope to see y'all there soon. You're welcome. Thank you, Ro. I'm at home, mom, and want to start a second business with sweets. You're welcome. Well, I hope something here and a lot of my videos has helped you along the way. All right? So, yes, it's been long. I'm going to end this. If there's no other questions, please give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Your girl, Ro. If y'all want to keep getting these back-to-back, the back-to-back videos, I still got colors to come and give you life on. I'm waiting on one to come in the mail. And that's that edible rose gold coloring. If y'all want to see these back-to-back -back videos, get this video to 600 likes. And let's see what you're really working with. <laughs> All right, it's been real. I appreciate each and every one of you. Love you. Y'all stay blessed.